My name is Mick Napier and I'm chair of the Scottish Palestine Solidarity Campaign. We've organised this protest outside the Scottish Parliament today and for the next two days of this provocative exhibition inside, which I have to stress has been called by one rogue MSP, Ken McIntosh, who is a mouthpiece for, uh, for Israel. Um, our aim is to show, in all our work, is to show that uh, not only does this government not act in our name in invading Iraq or Afghanistan and in supporting the State of Israel, but directly counter to the wishes of the great majority of, of Scottish and British people. The BBC published its latest uh, international opinion poll last week um, World Service opinion poll and once again Israel is a pariah state. Now we are used to a very very um, distorted uh, press coverage of Iran, uh, therefore Iran was unpopular, but we're used to massively favourable coverage of Israel, yet Israel languishes among the most unpopular countries in the world in terms of what people think right across Europe. So the boycott, divestment and sanctions campaign successfully taps into that. Mm and gives people a chance where we won't have any opportunity in the coming election mm. to discriminate between pro-Israeli candidates and pro-Israeli candidates mm. as, as Prime Minister, yeah. um, it gives them a chance to make their voice heard. And we're beginning to see, for example, an Israeli water company called Eden Springs lose mm. contracts from the City of Edinburgh Council, mm. from uh, Glasgow City Council, from many from universities mm. following student occupations mm. against the Gaza massacres, Eden Springs is losing many, many contracts. So we think that the boycott divestment sanctions campaign is the key to the lock here, is mm. the solution that allows ordinary people here to support the people of Palestine in a meaningful way. And only two days ago, a very prominent American singer, Gil Scott Heron, mm. Many people see him as the founder of, of uh, hip hop and rap, um, announced the cancellation of his gig in Tel Aviv following an approach by pro Palestine campaigners. This follows the American singer Santana uh, cancelling his gig in Tel Aviv in February. So we hope this will provoke a chain reaction. But cultural boycott, scientific and cultural boycott, academic boycott, all these things are now beginning to grow in a way that we didn't dream of um, a couple of years ago. So. We think that we can, we can make a contribution to the Palestinian struggle for freedom. Several years ago, the European Union financed a major opinion poll across the whole of Europe. Um, and they asked people to rate countries in terms of their um, danger, the, the ordinary people's perception of their, of their, um, of their role. Israel consistently came bottom of the poll in every single country in Europe. The majority of people found that Israel, believed that Israel was a major threat to world peace. Mm. So it's you have two things happening at the same time. You have fantastic support for Israel among the elites, among and militant support from France, Germany, Britain and so on. But at the level of public opinion, what people actually believe mm. and what people think, it's the opposite. The great majority of people are actively suspicious and hostile to what the State of Israel is doing to the people mm. of Palestine. And this is just a fact. This is borne out time after time after time. Mm. And when these polls are published, the Israeli government mm. usually goes uh, bananas and says, <laughs> you know, Europe is anti-Semitic or some yeah. such nonsense like this. Mm. Most people hate crime mm. and Israel is a big criminal. Mm. So we treat accusations of, of anti-Semitism with complete contempt. Mm. Our president is Jewish, uh, Marion Wolfson. Yeah. Uh, the, some, one of the speakers here today is Jewish. 